you, Brother Jerry, you made to see that. I belong to him. I've been redeemed, bought with a price. I belong to our Father, y'all. Hallelujah. That's what Jacob was saying. Abba, our Father, our Father. God, I thank you that you are my Father and I am your child. Somebody shout hallelujah. Thank you. Don't keep us, you may be seated. Hallelujah. For those of you who faithfully attend the ship or follow our ministry on YouTube, yes. you will know at the commencement of every year, I preach and teach a new sermon series yes, to Thank set God. the tone for the year. Amen. Last year, I, I, I spent three months, mm -hmm. January, February, and March, of last year talking about by faith yes. and boy then we use those sermons yes. as we went throughout 2023 yes. let me share with you very briefly how this sermon series was birthed in the spirit thank you brother Jeremy as many of you know that Lady C and I went through many storms Last year. Yes, right. yes. But the interesting thing is, throughout 2023, all year, I heard in the spiritual realm, a famine is coming. All right, yeah. all right. The Lord did not tell me or reveal to me what type of famine, whether it's a food famine, a word famine. He just kept on, I just kept on hearing in the spiritual realm, a famine is coming. I heard that all last year, a famine is coming. Around August, I heard the Lord say, prepare the people in 2024 for this famine. Yes, yes. You hear me? The Lord said, prepare the people. I need you to prepare the people in 2024 for this famine. Yes. I'm going to prepare you this year. No, I don't know when this famine is coming, how it will look as of now. I don't know how it will look, but I'm telling you, a famine is coming. I don't want to sound like a doom and gloom type of preacher today, but as a mouthpiece of God, as the angel of this house, I have to give you a warning yes, right. to let you know what's ahead. Yes, right. A famine is ahead, but we got to be prepared. Yes, right. yes, yes. And so, as I stated, Lady C and I, we went through many storms last year, from help to our vehicles and everything in between. Yes. And last month, of course, December of last year, on uh, oh, one cold morning, mm -hmm. as I was driving to work, I began to reflect on all that I went through in 2023. Yes, yeah. yes. And after my reflection, the Lord revealed to me, the Ravens, you went through the storm, That's right. but you came out of all of them. Amen. Amen. I made it and you made it yeah. on broken pieces. Yeah. 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 And that alone is favor. Yeah. Somebody shout favor. Let me say that again. That alone, when you go through something and make it out of it. You might make it out of a broken, you may make it out bruised, you may make it out with some scars, but when you make it out of it regardless, that is favor upon your life. Somebody shout favor! I define favor as this. Favor is the experience of God's approved blessings. It's a reason why I put the word approved because 
not to give you too much for next week, but I'm going to share with you next week anything you receive first come through the hands of the Father. God hand on God's hand is upon everything that touches my hand. Any, before anything gets to you, it must be approved by God. Before you go through anything, let's not even think about blessings right now. Approved blessings, yes, that's for sure. We're going to look at that. But let's think about your storms. Before a storm comes your way, the storm must go through God first. And it must be approved by God. And God said, if, if I approve it, that lets you know that you can handle it. Come on now, Pastor. So favor is the experience of God's approved blessings and other special benefits in your life. This definition would make sense as we go throughout this sermon series. Somebody shout favor. favor. And now I'm going to give you this full disclosure before I move further. Please note that favor does not exempt you from storms. <laughs> You are going to go through a storm in 2024. Yeah. It will never be a year in your life that you don't go through something. Yeah. 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 So don't get in your mind, I'm not going to go through anything this year. No, please don't get that in your mind. You're going to go through something. Yeah. Now, your storm may look different from my storm. My storm may look different from your storm. But all of us are going to go through something this yeah. year. Favor does not exempt you from going through a storm, but favor does guarantee that you will make it out of it. I'm going to say that again. I wish I had a, a five baptized sermon. Favor does not exempt you from going through a storm, but favor does guarantee that you will make it out of it.
And we're going to look at how God's favor was upon Joseph. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his sons. Because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a robe of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peacefully to him. Verse number three my focus is just going to be on this one thing. And he made him a robe of many colors. I'm going to yeah. preach, teach. Y'all know how I do. Yeah, <laughs> From the subject entitled clothed in favor. You are clothed of the Holy Ghost in favor. You may be seated. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for your presence that's in this place. I thank you because you have given us ears to hear and hearts to receive. As I proclaim this word, I pray, God, that this word will fall on good ground. I pray that I will be in tune with the Holy Spirit. Touch my heart, my mind, and my spirit. That I be in tune with you. My God. Heaven and earth will pass away. But your word will never fail. We need your word. We cannot live without your word. Somebody here right now need a word from you. God, help me through the Holy Spirit to give your people this word. God, we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shall clothe in favor. Clothe in favor. Hallelujah. Joseph came from a very dysfunctional family. His father was Jacob. And from the small minute sermon series that I did last month about the inner me. Yes. We know about the family drama between Jacob and his brother Esau. Yes. It was very dysfunctional. That's right. And I know this got a word, but this dysfunctionality <laughs> passed down to the next generation. Jacob married two sisters. <laughs> let, let, let that sit in there. <laughs> he married two sisters, Leah and Rachel. To make matters worse, not only did he marry two sisters, each one of these sisters had a maid servant. Yeah. And guess what, y'all? He had children by them. Yes. 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 So he had children. Jacob had children by four different women, two of them being sisters. And the other two being the sisters' midwives, or so maid servants, if you will. Just when you think that the family could not get any more dysfunctional, <laughs> Jacob's oldest son, which is Joseph's oldest brother, Jacob's oldest son had relation That's right. with one of his fathers, Jacob's baby's mamas. <laughs> Y'all need to read your Bible. This is the best lifetime story you ever get. And you thought your family was dysfunctional. You thought that your family was the only dysfunctional family that ever exists. Why would you think that in the very first family that's in the Bible, Adam and Eve, their family was dysfunctional? 
And as quiet as it may be kept, every family <laughs> functions <laughs> on this function. Wow. Yeah. 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 I know y'all don't want to say anything. Yeah. You may think that I'm talking about your family. I'm not talking about your family. I'm talking about everybody's family. Yeah. Everybody's family functions mm-hmm. on this function. Yes. Now, let's be honest, some more than others. <laughs> but everybody's family yeah. has some level of dysfunctionality. Yeah. 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 I'll prove it to you, since y'all just don't look at me like you want to. <laughs> One reason that, you know, in the world today, they have, I think they call it ancestry DNA tests. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And one reason why I, us, don't want to take it is some things hidden in our family that we don't want to come out. Because if you take that test, you'll find out that your granddaddy slept with his sister. And y'all might be laughing, but these are stories that I have heard to be true. It's some dysfunction. And, all right, let, what's the next holiday? Resurrection Sunday. Uh-huh. Let me come over to your house for Resurrection Sunday and, and let me see how you act with your family. Uh-huh. If you cut your eye, if your cousin say something, you do that fake laugh. <laughs> come on, somebody. Y'all don't be like this. Is, come on, it's a brand new year. I'm going to bust your up this year. Come on. Every family. Functions yes. on this function. Yes. Yes. But regardless of what level it's on, mm-hmm. dysfunction is dysfunction. Yes. Uh-huh. And I'm not just talking about your family. Yes. Amen. Now let's look at this. We're going to dig into this. Y'all ready to go deep sea dive? Yes. Let's go to Genesis chapter number 37, verse number 2 through 3a, if you will. Elder Jones. These are the generation of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was pastoring the flocks with his brothers. He was a boy with the son of Bilhad and Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report to them to their, of them to their father. Uh-huh. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his sons, mm-hmm. because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a robe of many colors. So let's start right there now. Jacob or Joseph, uh, Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his sons because yes. he was the son of his old age. Yes. I want to dig into that before I dig into this robe of many colors. Joseph's mother was Rachel. Yes. Yeah. Rachel was the woman that Jacob That's really right. loved. That's right. Yeah. That's right. He yeah. worked 14 yeah. years yeah. just to get yeah. Rachel. Yeah. Yeah. Now the reason he Jacob married two sisters yeah. because he, he, he made a, a deal with Rachel's daddy. If I work for you seven years, yeah. can I marry Rachel? Yeah. Rachel? Rachel daddy said yes. Well, when Jacob <clears throat> one night Jacob got in the bed and the lights was off to <laughs> make the marriage yeah. official, yeah. but when he woke up, it wasn't Rachel, because was Rachel, Rachel was younger than Le- Leah. Yeah. Yeah. It was Leah. Yeah. And the Bible says, y'all need to read your Bible. Yeah. The Bible said that Leah wasn't pleasant to the eye. <laughs> so he had to work another seven years yeah. just to get Rachel. Yeah. And that's the woman that he really wanted. Yes, yes. Yeah. He had a whole lot of children before Joseph. But when he finally got to Rachel, he had his 11th son oh, with Rachel. Mm. And that is Joseph. Yeah. Down to 11. Mm-hmm. Had him in his old age. Yeah. Oh. Now, now for men, we know this Jacob was probably too old to have children, but for men, this stroke our ego. 
to be old and still kicking. I wish I had some men here. <laughs> to be old and still dying. So this was his first. <laughs> this was his first son. Although this is his 11th son, but this is his first son with his first love, true yes. love, yes. Rachel. Yes. Yes. And he loved yes. Joseph. Yes. Yes. Jacob had two children by Rachel, Joseph and Benjamin. Benjamin is the baby, Joseph is the 11th son, because Jacob had 12 sons. That's when we get the 12 tribes of Israel. But the reason... I also believe that he loved Joseph more than Benjamin, not only because Joseph was the firstborn son that he had with his first true love, a real true love, but also Benjamin, while Rachel was giving birth to Benjamin, Rachel died. Yes, that's right. So Jacob, and I believe through Jacob's eyes, Joseph represents happiness. Yes. But Benjamin probably represents sorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Because maybe when he look at his baby boy, yeah. his mind goes back of how his real true love my God, my God. died my God. while being my God. birthed. My God. My God. Jesus. Change, Change. I want you to feel this. I'm going to take my time to do I want you to feel this. So here is the 11th son of Jacob or Israel because we know that um, Jacob's name would change to Israel. So he is the 11th son of Israel who is Joseph, but he is the first son of his with his first true love. Yeah. Yeah. And he's old. Yes. It's a lot of factors in this. Amen. It, it, it's a lot of factors in this. And because of all of these reasonings that I have given you, Jacob or Israel gave Joseph a robe of many colors. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is where I want to spend the majority of my time today. I'm not going to give you too much today because I want to just whet your appetite All right. so you can come back next Sunday. Amen. Here's this robe of many colors. Because of all of these factors, Israel gave Joseph this robe of men and colors. Mm -hmm. It's the meat of my sermon today. I'm going to deal with this, and, and that's going to be it. You need to get a clear understanding about this rule of men and colors. Usually, this rule was only given to the firstborn son. Somebody shout firstborn. Firstborn son. This means this robe was typically given to the oldest son. Yes. Mm -hmm. So according right. to tradition, yes. this robe wasn't supposed to go to Joseph. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to go to Reuben. Yes. Yes. But the father uh -huh. gave this robe to Joseph. <laughs> But it's supposed to go to the firstborn. Somebody shout firstborn. Firstborn. When I repeat myself, I'm not going yes. crazy. I'm going somewhere. Yes. Firstborn son. Yes. This robe symbolizes that this person, whoever read this robe, which is supposed to be the firstborn son, was going to get a double portion of the father's inheritance. Okay. Was going to be the family leader and was going to have the most notoriety. This robe symbolized that the son had favor from the father. God help me to teach this like I feel. All because he is the firstborn son. Yes. And because this Son, tradition, tradition has it because this first son, uh, firstborn son, wear the robe. Yes. He got favor yes. with the father. Yes. Anything the father got belongs to the son. Yes. All because he clothed in this robe. Yes. But it's only given to the firstborn. Somebody shout firstborn. Woo! Help me to preach. 
so <laughs> and, 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 and so, here's what I want you to say. Somebody shout first ball. First ball. Let's go to Colossians chapter number one, verse number 15. Can I teach this morning? Jesus. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. I'm jumping because God just brought something to my remembrance. I had a dream of this uh -huh. five years ago. Mm -hmm. That I was preaching this sermon. Oh my God. Oh my God. And I heard Brother Jones say, Yeah, Lord. Uh -huh. And Elder Jones were reading Colossians. Wow. Mm -hmm. My God, wow. my God. Yeah. 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 Something yeah. about your dreams that I'm gonna talk about next Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Colossians 1:15, Elder Jones, let's read. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. The what? Firstborn. <laughs> so Jesus is the image yes. of the invisible God. The invisible yes. God. <laughs> Who God is, Jesus is in the Watch flesh. Out. Watch out. Jesus is an earthly reflection yes. of our spiritual God. Yes. So if God is merciful, and he is, Jesus is mercy in the flesh. Yes. So Jesus is a replica of God in the flesh. So Jesus is the image replica. If I replicate something, it's a duplicate. It's, it's just like it. So Jesus is, it is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn. Somebody shout firstborn. First we don't start right there. The firstborn. Yes. Yes. The firstborn. Yes. He's the firstborn. Yes. He's the firstborn yes. of all creation. All creation. Y'all gonna ride the long bus with me? Yes. Come on, come on. Think about this. The road uh -huh. went to the firstborn son. Yes, yes, yes. Colossians let us know that Jesus is the firstborn son of God. Yes. Now, don't think about this as if, as Jesus is the first person born on earth. No. That's right. That's right. It's not really talking about because really the firstborn son in the flesh is really Adam. That's right. But it's talking about rank. Mm. The best way that I can describe this is like this. We have a first lady of the United States. Yeah. Yeah. First lady of the White House. That's right. Miss Biden. Mm -hmm. I almost forgot who was Miss Biden. <laughs> But First Lady Biden is not the first That's right. lady. That's right. That's right. She's not the first first lady. Y'all right. get what I'm saying? Right. Uh -huh. She's not the first first lady, but she is the first lady, lady in rank because of her connection to the person in charge. Yes, yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So Jesus is not the first person born, That's right. but he's the first person first uh, firstborn son of a father in rank. Yes, right. Amen. Yes, right. He's right there equal with God. Are y'all with me? Let's read Elder Jones. Yes. <laughs> For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, mm -hmm. visible and invisible, mm -hmm. whether thrones or dominions, mm -hmm. or rulers or authorities. Mm -hmm. All things were created through him and for him. Mm -hmm. Six, seven, yes. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. God, Jesus is holding you together. Yes. Yes. The person that's keeping your mind is Jesus. Yes. He, he, he holds the whole universe together. Yes. He holds your mind together. He holds your spirit together. The firstborn son who is Jesus is holding us together. You need a little more Jesus. When you feel like you're about to lose your mind, say, Jesus, I need you to stand up in here. He's the only person that can hold you together. Oh, 18 other Jones. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. He is the firstborn from the dead. Yes. yes. Jesus, who is the firstborn son, because of rank, his rank to God yes. the Father, yes. is the only person in history that got up from the dead, went down to yes. hell, yes. and got some dead souls from hell. Yes, sir. He got up. <laughs> and 
because he got up. When our eyes close on this side, we don't get up on the other side because he is the firstborn from the dead. Let me bring it a little bit closer to home. If there's anything dead in your life, your marriage, your mind, your ministry, anything dead in your life, because you got Jesus who holds you together, Jesus can bring life to dead things. Read, Elder. Yes, sir. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to, to dwell. In, in everything that's in God is in Jesus. Yes, uh -huh. Go ahead. And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. My yes. God, my God. So we have peace with God yes. if we do this, yes. what I'm about to show you. Yes. But let's remember that Jesus is the firstborn son. Of God the Father. Yes. 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 And whoever, according to tradition, was the firstborn son, yes. was clothed in a robe yes. that symbolized favor. Yes. The Father's authority went to the son because yes. he was clothed in a robe. Yes. Yes. I'm going somewhere. Yes. And Jesus is the firstborn son yes. of God. Yes, yes, he is. Yes, he Romans is. 13, 14 tell us to do something. Mm -hmm. Elder Jones. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Stop. All right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Y'all got me. Yes, sir. Yes. I don't believe you did. Yeah. You. Come on here. You got to put on. The firstborn son. Yes, yes, yes. How do you put on Jesus? It's Come not all. Just believe. Just believe. God, I believe in you. I believe yes. that you sent your son Jesus to die for my sin. Yes. And because he died for my sin, I have peace with yes. you. And once yes. you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised up his firstborn son yes. from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Yes. You have put on. Read, Elder Jones. And make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Okay, so 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 when you got oh saved, God. you put on yes. Jesus. Yes. You put on the firstborn son. Yes, yes, thank you, Lord. Anything that's on the firstborn son is now on you. Oh, Y'all don't know where to run. Yeah. So if God gave his firstborn son, who is Jesus, healing, yes. once you put on yes. Christ, yes. healing is on you. Yes. Some of y'all look at the stuff and you already told him. The reason you don't know what's on you because you haven't been told. But what I'm teaching you today is that you are told. Every blessing yes, is on God. Jesus. Yes, it's on you. It's on you. It's on Jesus is the seed yes. of Abraham. Yes. The seed of Abraham. Yes. And when you put on Christ, yes. let me give you another scripture. Ah. Ephesians 1 3. Ah. Read this for me, Elder Jones. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every. Every, every, every spiritual every blessing in the heavenly places. Yes, sir. Ain't left out none. You better help me preach. I want y'all to know that you're already blessed. I want you to know that you're already healed. I want you to know that this too shall pass. I want you to know that you got favor on your life. of God, approved blessing and special benefit in your life. Every blessing that's on Jesus because you put on Christ is now on you. You have put on favor. Go back to Ephesians 1, 3. I got everything I need. I'm clothed in everything that I need. 
I'm clothed in favor. I'm clothed in favor. I got on a robe of many colors. I'm clothed in favor. People may hate on you, but you got favor on your life. Get so much favor on your life when you walk through the water. You won't drown. It's so much favor on your life. You have no idea how much favor is on you. You clothed in favor. on a many colors. When you walk in the bank, you got favor. When you walk in the doctor's office, you got favor. Some people may say, it's something about you. Yeah, favor! Psalms 84 verse number 11 says this and I'm going to close. The Lord is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor. He does what? He bestows favor. He does what? He bestows favor and honor. Oh my God, my God. Read this with power. No good thing. No. No good thing. Does he withhold from those who walk upright? It's a condition. It's a condition. You gotta be upright. You gotta be upright. You're always gonna be upright. You gotta put on. Sweet, yeah. Yeah. sour, yeah. salty, yeah. or bitter. Yeah. But people of God, because of the favor of God on your life, mm -hmm. other people may hate. Yeah. 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 Go, go to Genesis 37 4. It says that his brothers hated him yeah. and could not speak peacefully Peace. to him. Yes. Don't worry about what people say about you. Yeah. Yeah. When you got favor, God will make your enemies out of your footstool. When, when, when you got favor, you don't have to worry about the naysayers. The haters are supposed to hate because favor is sweet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's salty to them, but it's sweet to you because favor ain't fair. How do you get, how you got what you got because of favor? No, that's not, that's that flavor. It's sweet. Favor is sweet. It's shame that, but it's showed up for it. Don't hate because other people are favored to do stuff that you're not favored to do. I want you to know that you are favored. That you are clothed with favor from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Your mind is clothed in favor. Your body is clothed in favor. Your finances is clothed in favor. Your children are clothed in favor. Everything about you is clothed in favor. Everything about you is got favor. Favor rests upon you. My goal here today is to show you since you have put on the firstborn of the Son, That's right. the only begotten of the Father, That's right. and all everything that is on God is on Jesus, and if it's on Jesus, now it's on me. Your healing is already on you. Yes. Just call it forth. Yes. Your breakthrough is already it's on big, you. Big. You don't know what's on you. Yes. Elijah, and I'm a close. Glory, glory. 
Elijah bones were so powerful <laughs> that although his body was dead, yeah, the right. bones from his body were still bringing life to dead things. Yeah. I wish you would get this in the spirit. I'm going to say it one more time for the people in the back. Yeah. The prophet had so much favor on him yeah. that when he died, yeah. his bones still had glory on him. I want y'all to 
want to hear me, please, I cannot stress this enough. I'm going to open, I'm going to pray with you and open up the doors of the church. Jesus. I want you to get tough skin mm. to be able to have the favor. Amen. I want you to know this. You're going to go through some storm. Folks don't talk about you, but can you handle this? Yes. Some of you can't handle the blessing that God has for you Amen. because you care about too much about what people say. But they, they don't speak to me. So what? Amen. What God has for me, it is for me. And don't you never apologize how God has blessed you. Don't, people don't like because you can go out and pay for everybody dinner for lunch. But they don't know there were a time that you didn't even have two pennies to pay for a ham sandwich. And because God has favored me to be a blessing to you, I'm going to do, I'm going to show you Stuff that you went through and lost that natural bone mind, they died. But thank God for the favor that told you you are all in favor. Somebody shout favor! Somebody shout favor! And if you want to hate it about it, hate the man that clothed me. Hate God. And that's a man that you don't want to hate. Favors don't be on you this year. Hands lifted. Hallelujah. Sister Regina. I want y'all to hear me. One of the only ways that you would know how favorite you are is when you go through storms. But God is going to work that thing out for your good because of the favor that's on your life. I'm going to give you this two testimony and I'm going to pray with you. I feel the Holy Ghost. Y'all know my, I tell, I tell my testimony, I tell, you may say my business, but I tell my testimony to show you what God has done for me. He will do the same thing for you. When I needed eight thousand dollars to get my wife car out the shop and I didn't have it, and I called the bank and the bank paid me favor. It's only because what I'm clothing. That same favor rests on you. It's not just on your pastor. It's on you too.
that I know how much favor I got, I had to go through something. And when I went through it, I came out of it. I made it on broken pieces. Favors don't show up. Hands look at God. I thank you for favor. I thank you. 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 Favor rests upon us. From the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Because we have put on the, your firstborn son, who is Jesus, we are now clothed in favor. I thank you that this year we're going to see favor on our life like never before. Oh, yes, we're going to go through some things, but favor guarantees that we're going to make it out of it. Satan, I don't care what you do to us, how you try to throw us around. I tell you one thing. If God be for us, who can be against us? Everything that you throw at us, God is going to use that thing for our good. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We thank you. And this will be a year of favor. This will be a year of favor. We're going to have favor in the famine. This will be a year of favor. We're going to have favor in a famine. This is the year of favor. And we give you praise. And we give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name. I want you to give God the best praise that you have for favor. Come on, give God the best praise. Come on, praise him for favor. Praise him for favor. Tell your neighbor you got favor on you. As I open up the doors of the church, it's two things that I want to do. As I open up the doors of the church. If you don't know Jesus, yes. if you have not put on Christ, yes. nothing that I preach this morning applies to you mm. until you do that. Mm. Amen. Change, change, change. Oh my goodness. Yes. Certain things open up for me because of how I dress. Ooh, my yeah. Oh, that's good. Mm. Spit, mm. Spit. Oh my God. When I'm going to make a business move, I don't wear blue jeans, jogging pants, and a t-shirt. That won't open the door. But I put on slacks, a tie, and a shirt because it, because of what I got on opens the door. Catches in the spirit. Once you put on Christ. So the receiver, I feel like you're wrong. Once you put on Christ, you can't open 